Peter Thomas Pornatal back with you at the DRF Studios in New York to talk about Royal Ascot. Very happy to have joining me DRF's international correspondent, Marcus Hirsch. Marcus, how are you today? I'm fine, Peter. How are you? I'm doing very well. It's hard not to be doing well for me on the eve of one of my favorite days of racing of the year, the Tuesday at Royal Ascot. There's no wading into the water when it comes to Ascot. You dive in headfirst into the good stuff, and that's the Group 1 Queen Anne. We've got some USA representation here this year. We're taking a look now at the field on your screen. Those are USA morning line odds over to your right. Folks will see a lot of familiar names. Uh, ben Battle, uh, who we saw run at the Dubai Carnival. Lightning Spear, a horse we'll be watching some video a little bit later on. It's, it's an interesting rendition of the Queen Anne, reminiscent to me, Marcus, of the field that Teppen beat a couple of years ago. And while that there are some quality runners here, it doesn't appear that there are any uh, massive world beaters from the local team. Would you agree with that assessment? Um, absolutely. Who, where, who does this line, I'm wondering? That is a great question. I assume it has to do with uh, one of the ADWs that's taking the, the betting. I'm not 100% sure. You can see there yeah. the, the morning line Gosh. favorite, Rhododendron, at, yeah. uh, at 5 to 2. Yoshida, the USA representative, at 15 to 1. Uh, where do you start, Marcus, in looking at this race? Well, I mean, if, just for people who looked at the odds, I would start by saying that Ben Battle is not going to be 20 to 1. Or, I mean, that horse is going to be a lot shorter. Beat the Bank is, I don't know, I think I saw 4 to 1 on that horse. I don't think that's right. But it, you know, you hit it on the head. I mean, you know, I'm sorry. It's just a, it's a down year for Euro milers. Um, I haven't seen anything that's impressed me at all. And, you know, I mean, sure. Rhododendron is a nice filly. She gets weight in this race. I think she gets six pounds as a three-year-old filly, um, something like that. And, uh, but I mean, she just barely beat lightning spear, uh, in the lock hinge stage. The lock hinge is, often been a really good race won by excellent horses lightning spear is a seven-year-old who just got trounced in the queen anne last year and i mean i think we know who he is at this point he's okay but and uh, maybe rhododendron is better than that but i mean if she's five to two I, I think that says a lot i mean the horse that's i think second choice in uh overseas antipos reco letos um he won the pre behind it and Oh boy, just not a good race. I don't, I don't fancy him that much at all. I mean, Ben Battle had a really good uh, run in Dubai, but I mean, I have no idea how he's going to cope with a straight horse mile. And this is just for people who aren't familiar with the, the layout. They just run down a straightaway, but it is they do go uphill for some portion, and it's what they would call a testing mile. Doville, I mean, come on, we've seen enough of Doville <laughs> and Lamato and all these horses. I, I'm sorry to be a homer, Pete, about this, but I, I'm going to be betting Yoshida, but I'd like to be betting him into the uh, overseas pools probably more than the American pools. I think he's going to get pick, uh, considerably more action here than there. Maybe not, um, but that's just Yoshida's just a horse that I've always thought was super talented since he kind of came out in the Murphy Stakes a year ago um, at Pimlico, uh, and he didn't win. I mean wasn't winning all his races last year but if you go back and watch his runs he does something impressive every time and then for him to come out um and win the turf classic first time out at age four you know and do it i think in really nice fashion just showed me that he's grown up the way you would expect and is ready to have a good four-year-old season obviously you know you're taking the worst of it with straight course and having to ship so far and blah 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 but um if he handles all those things i think he's going to have a chance Let's take a look at Yoshida's run in the Hill Prince from last year. This race ended up being very productive with, I think, five next out winners, including Yoshida. And as you said, Marcus, this is a horse who very early on in his career stamped himself as a talent and continues to look like one who might just go ahead and train on for Bill Mott. This, uh, the last race of his three-year-old campaign came back to win impressively at Churchill. Are you given any pause at all by these conditions? Uh, the straight mile for him, Jose Ortiz instead of a local rider, 
at Ascot, uh, or do you think it'll be built into the price, at least if you can grab the 15 to 1 or so that's expected to be available internationally? Well, I mean, I think it's built into that. You always, you know, Pete, as well as I do, it's just a guess with a, you don't know how the horse is going to adapt. What gives me encouragement in that regard is that this horse has run really well on a lot of different tracks. Granted, they're all left handed flat tracks in the U.S., but he has shown an affinity or an ability to, to run the same sort of race, you know, under different conditions, which I think is really encouraging. As for the Jose Ortiz angle, Dude's a great jockey, you know. I mean, he doesn't, he won't know exactly what to do, but he knows the horse, and he seems like a really smart guy. And I think he'll do his best to get as much information as he can. And uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Makes sense to me. Let's check out the video of the lock hinge, which we talked about before. We have rhododendron here in the uh, familiar, so dark blue. They're almost black colors on the outside and that'll be lightning spear putting in a bid down uh, towards the running rail here both of these had perfect trips yeah. i think you're probably right about uh, lightning spear we kind of know what he is is there a chance that rhododendron this was cutting back to a mile after going farther at the end of last year not much in it at the end she prevailed do you think there's a shot she could move forward here or do you really feel like uh the five to two or, or whatever she's going to be is short enough and you'll be looking elsewhere well i mean i i think she can move forward don't you <laughs> i i would like to think that she'll have be progressive this year and uh, and have more to come i'm yeah. not excited against this particular field at taking a really short number on her after getting such a perfect trip through there even if she, even if she, you know, even if she does improve, uh, that I mean, that doesn't mean that that's a fair price on her at all. In my opinion, I don't think that it is. Uh, and you know, as far as the others, I mean, you're just casting about for you know the right trip on the right day. You know, with these lesser horses, I mean, Sue Dwa, he's a fine horse in America, but he's never done anything, you know, in, in England or Ireland. Or I mean, his, he has some good French form going shorter, but. I don't, I don't know. I think he likes turns as much as anything. So, I mean, I have a hard time latching on to any of these other horses, which is why I think Yoshida could be the right one. I like it. Let's move on and talk about the King Stand, which in the betting, uh, it seems like the consensus is that this is going to come down to a match race between <laughs> Lady Aurelia, two-time Ascot winner, and uh, Batash. Now, uh, I'm very curious to see how Lady Aurelia does. There have been stories about why she may have underperformed in her last race at Keeneland, uh, having to do with the fact that Ward says she's grown up a bunch and needed the race more than she needed it last year. But for me, Marcus, this is two times in a row where we've seen less than we expected from Lady Aurelia, and I'm a little bit nervous about the prospect of taking a short price. What are you hearing about Lady Aurelia? Do you think she's got a shot to uh, capture the imagination once again with an impressive Ascot run? Well, I mean, I grant that. I grant that is a possibility. However, Wesley is always very bullish on these horses. Um, he's just he takes an optimistic approach. I I can't have her at at you know at favoritism in this race. Uh, maybe she bounces back. His, you know, Wesley's point is she loves running straight. She loves overseas, and there's no denying that she's run great races there. But if you consider how brilliant she was at two and what a monster she was at three, I mean, she doesn't have any room to go up. I mean, there's nothing to me but downside for her at this point in her career. And you know, if she, you know, dashes off and wins by three lengths in this race. I mean. I, I'll be the first to stand up and applaud. It would be a great accomplishment. She's she's already had a wonderful career. She's done amazing things. But I just think that, you know, I think there's a better chance that she's beyond her best than she come bounces back just because she's going back to England. I mean, Batash is a, a spectacular sprinter. Um, you know, he, he does have some brain issues, evidently, and uh, in the, the whole circumstance of this race, and, and, you know, it's, it's, I guess, somewhat problematic for him. I mean, he's going to get blindfolded or something behind the gate. They're, they're going to take special consideration to try to make sure he doesn't lose it before the start, which is not exactly what uh, you, know, you want in a five-year-long race where 
any error is going to be punished. Um, and there are other good horses in this race too. I mean, uh, Blue Point ran some really good races. I, he's a horse that I, I could consider getting involved with, you know, at the right price, although five eights may be on the short side for him. Um, but yeah, and uh, it would be, we'd be remiss not to mention, I'm going to guess the first Indiana bred to run at the Royal Ascot meeting uh, with Shiro, who is a fine, you know, turf sprinter. He, he um, you know, on his day, he runs really well in five eights. It's fine for him. I just don't know that his very best race is going to be good enough to get more than like third or fourth if he's lucky in this race. That sounds about right. One note on Batash for those betting through the tote pools. Not only will I imagine Lady Aurelia will be super duper supported in the tote pool, maybe creating just a hint of a bit of fat with Batash, but you have the opportunity to see him go down. At York, when he uh, boiled over and sort of no-showed, he really tipped his hand that he was acting poorly. So at least you have the opportunity to watch. They think they figured it out, but I, I definitely, for uh, anyone watching overseas, I, I would wait till the last minute to back Batash. Would you agree with that assessment? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, that's his whole problem is he gets so fired up, evidently, right before the start that he's liable to dash into the Queen's carriage or something like that. <laughs> what a story that would be. Not the, oh. story, not the story we want to be telling out of the first day at Royal Ascot. That's well, I mean, yesterday some French trotting horse ended up in a lagoon with a driver hanging out to the sulky, so I suppose anything's possible. <laughs> Very quickly, before we leave Tuesday, the St. James Palace, another mile race. This one won't run on the round course, not the, the flat course of the Queen Anne. A couple of familiar names in here. One U.S. racing note without parole owned by... Justifies breeder John Gunther uh, ran a big speed figure in the second start, missed the guineas with a bruised foot. A lot of hype and uh, a lot of betting, a lot of steam when it comes to without parole. I'm also very interested in U.S. Navy flag, who was so tough last year, came here for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, ran sort of inefficiently last time, and felt like one who might be able to ration that speed around the bend and be a wire threat at a number. Did you have any thought on the St. James Palace? Well, I mean, I was really high on Wutan early, earlier in the year. He disappointed in his last race without any apparent excuse for me. But um, all he has to do is bounce back to his previous form. And, and I think that he might, he would have a chance, though, if it's really fast ground, maybe that's not what he wants. And uh, Gabber, um, for Sir Michael Stout, he, you know, he, he was right on the heels of without parole last time. And he's like four times the price. So, um you know, if you, if everybody's so high on without parole and I'm not necessarily among that group, that's another one to consider, at least for an each way play at a much better price. All right, there you have it. Our thoughts on the first day at Royal Ascot for Marcus Hirsch. I'm Peter Thomas Pornital. Stay tuned for more.